Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at mobster Nikki Santora. Nikki Santora, a young gangster from New York City who was born on June 21, 1942, has a reputation as a fearsome figure. He was the offspring of Joseph Magliocco, the underboss of the Colombo criminal organization, and Modesto Santora. Santora, who had previously been a member of a youth gang, joined the Mafia in the middle of the 1970s together with other mobsters Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano, Benjamin Lefty Ruggiero, and Joseph Big Joey Messino. Santora became close to the Bonanno family when his boss Philip Rusty Rastelli was in jail. During this time, there was a power struggle between Carmen Lilo Galante, who had previously served as an underboss and consignee for boss Joe Bonanno, and Rastelli's management. Santora initially worked for a gang run by Michael Mikey Sabella, a follower of Galante, and he got heavily involved in a number of criminal pursuits, including extortion, loan sharking, labor racketeering, illegal gambling, truck hijacking, and contract assassinations. Rustelli wasn't happy when there were reports in 1978 that Carmen Galante was taking over as head of the Bonanno family. Rustelli took a stance and hired Captain Alphonse Sonny Red Indelicato to plan Carmen Galante's murder. Indelicato enlisted Nicky Santora, whose job it was to inform mobster Cesar Bonventure and Dominic Napolitano of the message and then report back to Indelicato. Since Michael Sabella, who remained faithful to Galante, was not informed of the plot, this operation had to be covert. On July 12, 1979, Carmen Galante met his demise just after a meal at Joe and Mary's Italian-American restaurant in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Accompanying him were his associate Leonard Coppola and the restaurant's owner and cousin, Giuseppe Tirano. The individuals responsible for the murder were Anthony Bruno Indelicato, Dominic Big Trin Trinchera, Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano, and Louis Louis Guetta Giangetti. These hitmen were all hired by Alphonse Indelicato. Following the assassination of Galante, several of his supporters, including Michael Sabella, were demoted. In contrast, Trinchera, Messino, Napolitano, and Bonventure saw promotions to the rank of captains within the Bonanno crime family. There is speculation that Galante's death was orchestrated by the leaders of the other five families in New York. They viewed Galante's excessive greed and his ambitions for control over the highly lucrative heroin trade as a significant threat to their collective interests. Throughout these developments, Philip Rusty Rustelli remained the boss of the Bonanno family. Under the leadership of Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano as a captain, the Motion Lounge crew became a highly profitable faction within the Bonanno family. Notably, the crew included soldiers such as Nicholas Santora, Robert Capozio, John Sersani, John Zancocchio, Edward Barbara, Benjamin Lefty Ruggiero, Michael Sabella, Joseph Puma, Stephen Maruca, Salvatore Ferrugia, Antonio Tomasulo, Anthony Fat Tony Robito, Frank De Stefano, Salvatore D'Ottavio, James Episcopa, and a mafia associate named Joseph Donny Brasco Pistone, who, unbeknownst to them, was an undercover FBI agent. Napolitano relocated his business to Florida in 1980 after spending the previous three years operating out of Brooklyn. He formed a network involved in loan sharking, illegal gambling, extortion, and racketeering alongside Donnie Brasco. Santo Traficante Jr., a longtime Florida boss, gave the go-ahead for these actions. During this time, Santora and Brasco were given the responsibility of managing the whole Florida enterprise. Back in New York, Alphonse Indelicato rose to prominence as the Bonanno family's alleged leader, while Philip Rostelli's leadership started to fall out of favor. New York was too dangerous. Napolitano relocated all his activities to Florida as a result of this change in the balance of power in an effort to undermine the financial might of the opposing side. Trinchera and Philip Phil Lucky Giacone, two other captains, and Indelicato started laying plans to take over the family. Due to local law enforcement initiatives and growing emphasis on organized crime operations, a number of clubs in Florida finally faced shutdown. As a result, Napolitano's team relocated back to New York, where the opposition in Delicato party had grown to be powerful and influential. A crucial occurrence occurred on May 5, 1981, just as a fresh dispute within the Bonanno family was beginning. The 2020 club, a bar formerly run by Sammy Gravano the underboss of the Gambino crime family, was the scene of the ambush and murder of Alphonse Indelicato, Giacone, and Trinchera. The remains of the other two mobsters weren't found until 2004, while Indelicato's body was found three weeks later in an established mafia burial ground in Ozone Park, Queens. According to FBI agent Joseph D. Pistone, the individuals responsible for the assassination of Indelicato included Nicholas Santora, Sonny Black Napolitano, John Sersani, Joseph Messino, Salvatore Vitali, 
Joseph Di Simone, Vito Rizzuto, Louis Giangetti, Santo Giordano, and Gerlando Sciascia. Lookouts Benjamin Lefty Ruggiero and John Sersani were stationed, and they were later involved in cleaning up the crime scene and disposing of the bodies. This was done in collaboration with Santora, Dominic Napolitano, James Episcopia, and Robert Capozio. Anthony Indelicato hid out after the deaths of the three captains. In the aftermath, Napolitano was promoted to the role of street boss for the still incarcerated Philip Rustelli, while Santora took charge of the Motion Lounge crew. The FBI operation involving Donnie Brasco ended during this time. In order to strengthen Brasco's status inside the Bonanno family, Napolitano gave the order to kill Anthony Indelicato and gave Brasco the contract in an effort to speed up Brasco's initiation. However, the true identity of Donnie Brasco was soon unveiled. A few days later, it was disclosed that Donnie Brasco was in fact, Joseph D. Pistone, an undercover FBI agent who had spent six years infiltrating the mafia. In the wake of this revelation, a directive was issued to eliminate Napolitano for permitting such a significant breach in mafia security. On August 17, 1981, Napolitano was lured to the basement of Bonanno associate Ron Filacomo's residence in Flatlands, Brooklyn. There, he fell into an ambush set by Filacomo and Captain Frank Lino, both of whom fatally shot him. The order for Napolitano's assassination had originated from Santora and Joseph Massino, acting on behalf of Rustelli. Santora took over as captain of Napolitano's former crew after Napolitano's defeat. Philip Rustelli was freed from jail, but Santora's situation deteriorated when he was charged as a result of Pistone's evidence. The consequences of Pistone's disclosures resulted in a massive legal crackdown on the Bonanno crime family. Rustelli and Anthony Indelicato were two of the over 100 family members who were tried and found guilty. In addition to being held accountable for other crimes, they were found guilty of racketeering allegations and Carmen Galante's murder. The Mafia Commission trial, a historic case, occurred in 1986. In November 1982, Santora, along with Lefty Ruggiero, Antonio Tomasulo, and Anthony Fat Tony Rabito, faced a six week jury trial and were convicted of racketeering conspiracy. As a result, Santora received a 15 year prison sentence. Subsequent to the Mafia Commission trial, Philip Rustelli, who had been the boss of the Bonanno family, received a 12 year prison sentence. He was released on July 21, 1991, due to health issues, but sadly passed away three days later in a Queen's hospital on July 24. Following Rustelli's passing, Joseph Messino assumed leadership as the new boss of the Bonanno family in August 1991. After being freed in 1992, Santora joined forces with Anthony Rabito, the newly appointed acting consigliere for Bonanno. Together, they were involved in a variety of criminal operations in Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx in the middle of the 1990s, including extortion, loan sharking, illegal gambling, drug trafficking, and money laundering. They built a strong relationship with Joseph Messino and Salvatore good-looking Salvatali, Messino's brother-in-law, developed their business, and by the late 1990s, they were the Bonanno criminal family's top earners. The Bonanno family and Joseph Messino were readmitted to the Five Families Commission around this time after being kicked out owing to the Donnie Brasco scandal. In 2000, Anthony Tony Sparrow, a long-standing consigliere of the Bonanno family, was indicted on charges including loan sharking, racketeering, and murder. Sparrow was subsequently sentenced to life imprisonment in 2001, leading to the promotion of Anthony Rabito as the official consigliere of the Bonanno family. By 2003, new indictments were issued, this time targeting the boss and underboss of the family. Joseph Messino and Salvatore Vitali were held without bail on charges encompassing racketeering, arson, extortion, loan sharking, money laundering, illegal gambling, conspiracy, and involvement in seven murders. In response to these developments, Nicolas Santoro was elevated to the position of acting underboss in 2003. Simultaneously with these events, indictments were also issued against Captains Anthony Tony Green Urso and James Big Lou Tartaglioni. In a surprising turn, both Urso and Tartaglioni chose to cooperate with the authorities, wearing wires and becoming government witnesses. While Santora continued to operate discreetly alongside Anthony Rabito, underboss Salvatore Vitali opted to become an informant. Vitale's cooperation was crucial, as the two captains implicated him in various murder and racketeering charges. In March 2004, Joseph Messino went on trial during this time. The government also sought racketeering accusations against Captains Michael Mikey Nose Mancuso and Vincent Vinny Gorgias Boschino as the court proceedings progressed. These accusations included various criminal offenses, such as murder and conspiracy. 
several prominent persons cooperated with the government and testified against their former associates during the judicial procedures, which helped present a complicated picture of the inner workings of the Bonanno crime family. In October 2004, the FBI initiated a search for bodies at the Hole, a notorious mob graveyard in Queens. The purpose of this search was to locate the remains of three captains who were killed during the Bonanno family conflict in 1981. During the excavation, the bodies of Philip Giacone and Dominic Trinchera were discovered. On February 4, 2005, the identity of an informant was revealed to the public, Joseph Messino. Messino, aiming to secure his life and assets, had begun cooperating with law enforcement in late September 2004. He recorded conversations with acting boss Vincent Boschino, who was subsequently convicted and imprisoned in July 2007. Santora avoided official scrutiny despite Joseph Messino's testimony in 2005 until he and Anthony Robito, along with 17 other members of the Bonanno family, were convicted. The accusations related to a significant illicit operation that included loan sharking and gambling. Between January 2003 and July 2004, this business operated out of various sites in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and Staten Island, bringing in a weekly salary of $210,000. Notably, the discovery of this enterprise was greatly aided by the passing of Bonanno family captain Louis Mele. In a room that also served as the hub for an illicit gambling operation, Mele died naturally. Nicholas Santora served as the suspected underboss of the Bonanno crime organization from 2004 until February 13, 2007. During this time, Anthony Robito acted as the consigliere, while Vincent Boschino was commonly considered as the supposed head of the Bonanos. As the interim leader, Salvatore Sal the iron worker Montagna reported to Boschino while incarcerated. On September 16, 2009, Nicholas Santoro was discharged from the Loretto Federal Correctional Institute in southwest Pennsylvania. He lived with his daughter in Franklin Square, New York, following a mistrial in 2016. Tragically, while awaiting a new trial, Nicholas Santora passed away on October 27, 2018, at the age of 76. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.